Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on comparing independent samples t-test and paired samples t-test using SPSS. I have fictitious data loaded in the data view here in SPSS. I have an independent variable named program. It has two levels, RABT, rational mode behavior therapy, and a waiting list. And there are a total of 50 records. I also have two dependent variables, anxiety one and anxiety two. And these are both measured at the continuous level. And using these fictitious data, I'm gonna demonstrate the difference between the independent samples t-test and the paired samples t-test. So if I move here to analyze, I wanna show you where these two statistics are. It's analyze, compare means, and you can see here independent samples t-test and then right below that paired samples t-test. The paired samples t-test is also known as the dependent samples t-test. So first we'll take a look at the independent samples t-test. So if we were looking at these data and asking how could we apply an independent samples t-test to these data, we would see that we have two groups, the RABT and the waiting list, and we have two dependent variables. And we know in terms of input for an independent samples t-test, we can have an independent variable with two levels. We can't have an independent variable with more than two levels, but we can only have one dependent variable. So in this case, I'm gonna choose anxiety one. So we're gonna use the independent variable program and the dependent variable anxiety one. And before we can conduct an independent samples t-test, we also have to consider the assumptions of the independent samples t-test, including that all the observations are independent, so we'll assume that. Uh, there's not a test for that that you can conduct in SPSS. That's something you would know based on your research design. So we'll assume that all these observations are independent of one another. So for example, the score in record two here of 45 is independent of all the other scores. It's not dependent on the score for record one, record three, or any of the other records. All these samples are independent of one another. The next assumption is that the dependent variable, in this case, anxiety one, is normally distributed for each level of the independent variable. So all these values here I've selected that correspond to RABT, these need to be normally distributed and all the values here for waiting lists need to be normally distributed. Now the independent samples t-test is robust to violations of normality. So if we violate this assumption, it doesn't automatically mean that the results will not be valid to interpret. But where we start with this assumption is to test the dependent variable for each level of the independent variable. And then the other assumption we'll be testing is the assumption of homogeneity of variance and we'll use the Levine's test for that. So we've met the assumption for independence of observations. Let's take a look at normality. We'll go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and then explore. And here, since I'm using the dependent variable anxiety one, I'm gonna move that over to the dependent list. And then the program variable that has the two levels. I'm gonna move that to the factor list. Now you can move the this variable as I have here, program to the factor list. Uh, this is one way of testing the normality for each level of the independent variable. You could also split the file. It all depends on how you want the output to be arranged. I want both the test statistics to appear in the same table, so I'm gonna leave program in the factor list list box. Moving over to plots, I'm gonna uncheck stem and leaf, uh, but check off histogram and then check off normality plots with tests, click continue, and then click OK. So taking a look here at the results, we can see uh, we're gonna interpret Shapiro-Wilk, which is a fairly common test of normality. And what we're looking for is a non-statistically significant result. That's a result that would indicate that the dependent variable anxiety is normally distributed. And we have a non-statistically significant result for RABT, 
and for waiting list. That is a p-value greater than 0 0.05. We also want to take a look at the histograms and the normal quantile-quantile plots. We don't want to rely on the results from the Shapiro-Wilk alone. Uh, we definitely want to take a look at the normal QQ plot. And what we're looking for here is how closely these points match up to this line. And you can see there's some deviation here, but generally the points move along the line here. And this is for the level of the independent variable program, REBT. Looking down at waiting list, uh, we can see again there's some deviation, uh, more deviation than we saw up here in the REBT level, uh, but still the points are fairly close to uh, the line. So we're going to assume that we have met the assumption for normality here. In this same output view, I also want to move down to take a look at the box plots. And you can see that I have uh, a box plot for REBT and waiting list. And you can see there are no outliers here. And if we did have outliers, that wouldn't necessarily mean that we wouldn't proceed with the analysis. It's just something we want to be aware of, and we want to take a look at those items to see if they're candidates for deletion uh, or not. It could be scores that are valid, but just happen to be a statistical outlier uh, in our sample. Next, we want to test for homogeneity of variance. I'm going to go to Analyze. I'm going to, I'm going to go to Analyze right here in the viewer. Uh, you can also go back to the data editor. And I'm going to go to General Linear Model, Univariate, and Anxiety 1 is going to be the dependent variable, and for the fixed factor, it's going to be Program. Then I'm going to go to Options and just select Homogeneity Test. That's all I'm really interested in here. Click Continue and then click OK. And I want to interpret the results of Levine's test. And you can see that's here, Levine's test. And here we do have statistical significance. This value is below 0 0.015. So we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. A p-value on Levine's test greater than 0 0.05 would indicate that we've met the assumption for homogeneity variance. So again, uh, just as in the case of a normally distributed dependent variable across all levels of the independent variable, the independent samples test is robust violations of homogeneity variance, but we do have to interpret the results differently than if we had met the assumption of homogeneity variance, and I'll show you how to do that when we move to the output for the independent samples t-test. So I'm going to go and proceed to the independent samples t-test, uh, the analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test. And you can see I'm going to move anxiety over to the test variable list box and program to the grouping variable. But notice when I do this that I'm left with these question marks here. All right, so it's looking for more information before it let me proceed. Well, behind each value in a variable in SPSS, we have a numeric value, right? So if I close this, move back to the data editor, see the A1 icon up here. I click on this and you can see that the numeric value for REBT is zero. And for waiting list, it's one. You can also see that here in the variable view. If you click on values, see zero equals REBT and one equals waiting list. So I'll just go uh, to analyze here in the data editor and I'll go back to independent samples t-test. Again, move anxiety one over and then I'm going to move the program variable over to grouping variable. I'm going to define the groups. Group one as zero and group two as one. So zero representing REBT, one representing the waiting list. Click continue. Now you can see it'll let me proceed. I click OK here. And looking at the output, uh, you can see that moving from waiting list to REBT, you can see there was a drop in the mean. The waiting list mean was 49. 
0.16 and the RABT mean was 46.4. So we know the RABT scores on average were lower. And let's see if there's a statistically significant difference. Now you can see here in the, from this table for anxiety one, we have equal variances assumed and equal variances not assumed. The data did not meet the assumption of homogeneity of variance because it had a statistically significant result on Levine's test. So in this case, we're going to interpret equal variances not assumed. And the p-value here is 0 0.049, which is below 0 0.05, so this is a statistically significant result. So what this means is that Let's consider the null hypothesis here. The null hypothesis would be that there's no difference between the groups. So if you look at this value of 0 0.049, what this is indicating is that there's a 4.9% chance that the observations we made were through random error alone if the null hypothesis were true, if there were no difference between the groups. And in the social sciences, we normally set the alpha at 0.05, or 5%. So because the result is 4.9% and the alpha is 5%, we reject the null hypothesis here and assume that there is a difference between the groups. So moving back to the data editor, what about the paired samples t-test or the dependent samples t-test? Well, the dependent samples t-test works on a completely different premise than the independent samples t-test. For the independent samples t-test, we had two groups, REBT and waiting list, and we wanted to determine if there was a statistically significant difference between these two groups as measured on the dependent variable anxiety one. A paired samples t-test does not assume independence of observations it assumes the observations are dependent. So that's why I have this anxiety two variable in here. So it's important to understand that this, between this anxiety one, anxiety two, even though we have different scores in these variables, this would be from the same measurement. This would be the same psychometric instrument that measures anxiety that would be used in both anxiety one and anxiety two. And looking at a particular row, this would be the same participant. So the same participant would take anxiety one, uh, they receive a score of 44, and then the same participant would move on and take, uh, usually it's a post-test, anxiety two, and a score of 42. So these are all matched pairs. So the independent samples t-test is a between subjects statistic. And the paired samples t-test is a within subjects statistic. So for the independent samples t-test, we had these two groups, the REBT group and the waiting list group. For the paired samples t-test, we're comparing two dependent variables. And again, usually we, we see this in the form of a pretest and a post-test with a treatment in between. But all the participants who have taken uh, the anxiety one instrument, whatever the instrument was that generated the variable anxiety one, and then the same instrument again for anxiety two. The participants in this case are not divided into two groups, they're not divided into REBT and waiting list. Or if they are, this is not something that the paired samples t test is going to capture. And if that's uh, what you wanted to know, was is there a difference across two dependent variables? across both levels of an independent variable, a paired samples t-test would be the wrong statistic to make that analysis. A dependent samples t-test can only look at, in this case, these two continuous variables and determine if there's a statistically significant difference between anxiety one and anxiety two. So as you can see, the independent samples t-test and the paired samples or dependent samples t-test are completely different in how they're configured. Independent samples is between subjects, dependent samples is within subjects. So again for the paired or dependent samples t-test we're going to want to take a look at the assumptions and we're going to test to see 
if anxiety 1 and anxiety 2, if both of these variables are normally distributed. And we can do this by going to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and you can see this is configured for the first test of normality. Uh, but here I'm going to move anxiety 1 and anxiety 2 to the dependent list. I'm going to take program out. Because remember in the dependent samples t-test uh, there is no independent variable. So we're not going to want a program to be over in the factor list list box. And of course we're going to keep the histogram and the normality plots with tests. Click continue and then click OK. I move down to Shapiro-Wilk. You can see for both Anxiety 1 and Anxiety 2, I have a non-statistically significant finding, 0.134 for Anxiety 1 and 0.728 for Anxiety 2, both values greater than 0.05. So we can assume that the or both variables are normally distributed. But again, we're not going to want to depend uh, completely upon the Shapiro-Wilk. Move down to the normal quantile quantile plot for anxiety one. You can see the points uh, mostly follow the line. We do have some deviation. And then for the normal quantile quantile plot of anxiety two, again, we have some deviation here and a little bit here, but generally the points do follow the line. Now, from the same output view, uh, I passed it moving down to the QQ plot. But you can see for anxiety 1, uh, we have a box plot, and we do have an outlier. Record 13 is an outlier. Now again, this doesn't mean we're going to discontinue uh, the process of the paired samples t-test, but we do want to be aware we have an outlier there, as indicated in the box plot uh, for anxiety 1. If we move down to the box plot for anxiety 2, we can see there are no outliers. So having checked the assumptions, we can go ahead and proceed with the uh, paired samples t-test. I'll go to Analyze, and then to Compare Means, Paired Samples t-test. And you can see the dialog here for paired samples t-test is completely different than the dialog we saw for the independent samples t-test. This allows you to load up pairs. Now you can see it says pair one. It'll allow you to load up several pairs. You can test several pairs with a paired samples t-test, not just one at a time. But here we're just going to test one at a time, which is anxiety 1 as variable 1, and anxiety 2 as variable 2. Under options, I'm going to make no changes. I'm just going to click OK. And you can see here from the paired sample statistics that the mean for anxiety 2 is lower than the mean for anxiety 1. So the anxiety levels did appear to decrease uh, from the pretest to the post-test. And then moving down to the results of the paired samples t-test, you see pair 1, anxiety 1, anxiety 2 here. We have a p-value of 0 0.003. So that is a statistically significant finding. So we reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference between these sets of scores. And we would say that there is a statistically significant difference between the variable anxiety 1 and the variable anxiety 2. So moving back to the data editor, uh, one question here could be, what if we did want to run an analysis that looked at the two levels of the independent variable and a pretest and post-test for anxiety? We know that the independent samples t-test would not work, and the dependent samples t-test would not work. Uh, what statistics would work? Well, you have a few possibilities. Among them would be repeated measures ANOVA, and another choice would be an analysis of covariance, ANCOVA. And I have separate videos that cover those topics. I hope you found this video on comparing the independent samples t-test and the paired samples t-test using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.